Hi, I'm Anne from Game Like a Mother. I specialize in games that can be played in 20 minutes or less, and this is my top five list for Cinco de Mayo. These are all very light, fun games you can play while celebrating Cinco de Mayo, so let's get started. First up, we have Cinco Linko. If you know how to play Connect Four, you can play this because instead of connecting four in a row, you're connecting five and then you win. You have these really nice little tiles that are on a carabiner. This is incredibly portable. Uh, you can take this game with you to a restaurant. We've played it at the beach and it got some sand on it. It didn't matter. The sand just washed right off. This is such an amazing, portable, fun game uh, that's really easy to teach because you just are trying to get five in a row. You take turns placing tiles out and uh, you can play up to four player. It works perfectly at two player, but you can add in a third or a fourth player and it still works perfectly. You just have more tiles entering into the game. And this game never ends in a draw or a tie because if everybody plays all their tiles out and you haven't had anybody get to five in a row, you then get to pick up tiles you've already placed down and put them into new places. And you just really have to pay attention and hope that where you're taking it out isn't giving somebody the thing that the spot that they need to complete their run. And uh, that's where the game gets really fun and exciting for me. So this game is fantastic because it's so easy to teach, easy to get up and running, but it's really fun to play. And there's still a good level of strategy for being such a simple game. Next up, we have Take Five, a game in which you are trying to get the least points. And you get points if you would have to play a card down and it would be the sixth in a row. You take the other five cards, hence the name of the game, and you count up any of the bowls on the top of the cards, and that's how many points you're getting. So between five in the title and bowls being involved, we're calling that good enough for a Cinco de Mayo theme. And what's really great about this game is up to 10 people can play simultaneously and the gameplay moves really fast though, which is really tricky to find in a non-social game. Uh, all you do on your turn is there are four rows in front of you and everybody from their hand of cards picks one card to play down simultaneously. You have them all face down, you reveal your cards and then they get placed out from low to high out on the, the cards in the middle. And you'll have something where you think, okay, there are three cards in this row. The third one's a 27. I'm probably gonna be safe playing my 30, but somebody else has played out a 28. Somebody else has played out a 29. And sure enough, your 30 is the sixth one that would be in that row. So you have to take those five cards, take the points, and your card starts off a new row of cards. And it's really nice because there's a mix of some luck, some strategy as you play. It's really easy to just get up and running and have everybody play. And it's especially nice because it's very easy to chat while you play this game. So you can have a lot of people playing a game that's easy to understand, fun to play, and you get to chat while you do. Next up, we have Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza, which is great for both kids and adults. 100% uh, of people who like speed games love this game. I do not know what it is about this game, but it just does everything perfectly. All you do for this game is just a deck of cards, so it's really portable, easy to carry with you wherever, and you just say the name of the game as you play. If um, I get to go first, I flip out a card and I say taco. The next person flips out their card and says cat. The next person, goat, then cheese, then pizza, and if at any time the word you're saying matches the card that you flip out, then everybody races to slap the card and whoever is last to slap has to pick up the cards and put them in with the rest of their cards that they're um, playing out. And you're trying to be first to get rid of all of your cards to win. And uh, this game has a few specialty items. There's a groundhog, there's narwhal, you do some special actions and then it's race to slap if those come out. So it's just really easy to understand, really fun to play. And I think it's really helpful that you have a measure of success as long as you aren't always the last person to slap, then you can feel pretty good about this game. And it works well for smaller groups, for larger groups. It's very versatile and very portable and fun. Next up, we have Taco Cat spelled backwards, which is a two player game that's very similar to War, but has just a little bit more going on. Uh, what you're trying to do is uh, to get the Taco Cat 
to end up on your side of the board by the end of the game. And you do that by playing rounds and in each round, you're playing out cards and people have to match or play higher than the cards each person is playing out. And then you want to have the lowest card left at the end of the round. So what happens is uh, you have something where uh, a person's playing out a 10 and so you have to play 10, 11 or 12, whatever, the same or higher. But if you can't do that, then you have to play the lowest card in your hand, which is like a, if you have like a three or something. And so that's bad because if you're getting rid of all these lower cards, by the end of the round, you reach reveal your final card and maybe their lowest card is a two and you have an eight. So you would lose the round. So it's nice, it's, it's war, but just with a little bit more going on to make it into more of a full-fledged game. And they have fun things like you have different hand sizes per round. You have cards that you can, you can discard. The middle cards are usually pretty worthless to you. So you can discard those and draw new cards and hope you're either getting really high or really low cards. So it's pretty mellow. It's, it's pretty easy strategy. It's based on war, but there's a little bit going on there. It feels like you're playing a full fledged game and it has a very fun theme and is very quick and easy to learn and play. And finally, we have the Taco Bell party pack card game. Uh, in this game, you were trying to get the most points and you get points by feeding your crew members, your friends, your, uh, have cards that match the, the items that they want that are menu items from Taco Bell. And so you're trying to collect cards that match what they want, you play it out on them, and then you have fed them, they're in your crew and you get points for them. They have some specialty cards. It's all very fun, it's all very thematic. I'm not a huge Taco Bell fan, but I had a really good time playing this game. But especially if you have a group of people together that really enjoy Taco Bell, this is a solid game with a very fun theme and worth checking out. So that's it for my top five Cinco de Mayo games. The only thing that can make a Cinco de Mayo celebration better is a good board game. So hopefully you found a good one on this list. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time from Game Like a Mother.